I was always under the impression that when you are having a baby, delivering a baby, that insurance covered, if you have insurance, it covers the epidural and it covers everything going on while you're having the baby. Sometimes yeah, no, not. No? Yeah, sometimes they just pick and choose what they want to cover and then you have to pay out of pocket for stuff. Like I, you get charged for skin to skin contact. Like for them to hand you your baby directly after you have it, what you get charged for that? It's crazy. I think that's for the labor for the nurses. It's like the way hospitals work are insane. So some of them, like your hospital, might be in network, but the anesthesiologist particularly is not in network. Hey. So that's why you have to pay separate fees for the anesthesia. So it, it depends on your insurance plan, but that's why you're supposed to quote this out before you go in, so you know what to expect. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. That's why this email is starting to make a little bit more sense because she wants an epidural. But uh, her baby daddy is saying they can't afford it. And I'm like, can't afford it? Like, if you got something going on in your life and you want to share it with us, and we go ahead and we throw it out to Burt Show fam around the country, hit us up at thebirdshow.com. We, our lifeblood is your drama. So what do we got going on? Here we go. I'm having a huge fight with my boyfriend and the father of my baby. We've been dating for about a year. I found out I was pregnant. And at first, he seemed really supportive. I mean, I wasn't exactly expecting him to propose marriage, but he has been and is planning to help pay for all the baby expenses. We also just moved into a bigger apartment, so we have room for the baby. However, there's one thing we were fighting about, and I'm pretty pissed. My health insurance isn't the greatest, and it doesn't seem to cover a lot, and I think it's because my deductible is really high. But from what I understand, it's too late to change insurance now, so I am stuck with what I have. My boyfriend seems pretty annoyed when the doctor bills have come in since he agreed to split all expenses. I told him it's only going to get worse from here and that I'm stressed about the cost of delivery. He said I have to do whatever I can to keep the cost down and not agree to anything extra. Apparently, he expects me to have a natural childbirth because then I wouldn't be charged for things like an epidural. I told him I was definitely not doing it naturally and that I wanted an epidural. He said that he wouldn't split the cost with me. If something isn't necessary, then I would be responsible for the full cost. I tried to tell him that wasn't fair and that an epidural is indeed necessary. He says that it isn't. He says women gave birth for all of history without it, and lots of women still do it today. He basically says it's a luxury to experience (sighs) pain-free childbirth. And we can't afford anything unnecessary. You let this guy do that thing to you? Right? What a D-bag. You're having a little one of him. Oh, Oh. the worst. All right. So I need to know from women, just how bad is it? Can I do this without the added expense? Or else, how do I get him to help me pay for it? Poor thing. 1-855-BIRCHA. So I just did a quick search. Um... And the headline that comes up is beware of additional costs for the epidural. According to Fair Health, a healthcare nonprofit, keeps a national database of insurance claims. The average cost of an epidural was $2,132. And that was back in 2016. Yep. Cassie? I mean, the average cost, especially if she her insurance isn't good, the average cost of, I think, birth is like 22000 What? For, mm-hmm. for my daughter, it topped well over 30000 because of complications. Um, here's the thing. I did most of my labor without the epidural, and it didn't take at first because I have red hair and I'm just kind of resistant to anesthesia. It's doable. Now, I didn't go through the actual, like, pushing the baby out. Let me be absolutely clear. But in talking to the nurse, she's like, next time you could really just go the whole nine yards. You can do it without the epidural. Tons of my friends, tons of women have done it. That said, when you're in that that room and you're the labor and delivery unit and you're having the baby, you as the mom need to be comfortable. It it is your time to push out this baby. It is a lot of hard work and it is scary whether or not you have Mm -hmm. an epidural. So going in there in a situation that's already uncomfortable and then you're uncomfortable on top of that, like an epidural is not Mm. a luxury. (laughs) It is something women can choose to have to alleviate the pain of childbirth. Like especially when you, if you see what 10 centimeters dilated looks like and that baby coming out, like that's a very different story. Your boyfriend needs to pay up if you want the epidural, but you can totally do it without it. Oof. Courtney, good morning. You were on the Burt Show. It's, it feels 
So painful. Yeah. <laughs> like, yep. I can't think of anything yeah. more painful. Hey, Courtney. <laughs> hey. So, I actually just had a baby in January, and I got the bill for the anesthesiologist, like, last week. And it was only about $1,000, and I do not have any insurance, so this is all self-pay. And I will say that the $1,000 was 100% worth it. <laughs> I no, bet it well, was. Well, listen to you. Sounding like a Kardashian <laughs> with your luxurious lifestyle. <laughs> you got a six-inch needle in your back. It. I'll be paying it for a while, but it's worth it. Worth it, no doubt. Thank you for calling. Appreciate it. All right, there might be a way around this. Hey, Kristen, good morning. You're part of the Burt Show. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Um, so what I was going to say was if she lives in Georgia, and I'm sure other states have this too, but if she lives in Georgia since she's not married, she can apply for Medicaid being pregnant, and then everything is paid for and free at the hospital no matter what she chooses. All right. Free baby, way better than $22,000 baby. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. I mean, the cries aren't as loud. <laughs> <laughs> Get you a free baby. Hey, Tamara, good morning. You're on The Bird Show. Hi. Hey. Similar to the one just uh, before me, there is a way to go to the um, department, financial department of the hospital and apply for grants. They have so many options for people who cannot afford their medical bills because the epidural is so necessary. Mm -hmm. Forget what that man says. Like I know, right? <laughs> yeah, me. she's got a bigger problem here. So getting this guy to pay for anything, it sounds like, from this point forward to support that baby if he's not willing to help with the epidural, mm -hmm. is going to be a big old fight, Cass. A lot of people also don't know you can actually negotiate your hospital bills. Really? So you can, uh, yes. You can call up and talk to billing and negotiate rates because everything's so overinflated. It's not going to be free. It's not going to be $5. It depends on the hospital. So do some research online because there are tricks and tips and plenty of people out there, even on TikTok, who will tell you exactly what to say when you're doing it. And I'm pretty sure medical debt as well doesn't count against your credit score, like when it goes to collections because it's classified as medical. But there are ways to get your hospital bill costs down. I kind of feel a certain way about this. If you win the financial negotiation, I don't want the people that are delivering the baby to be pissed. <laughs> they don't know. They don't know. <laughs> they, don't they, don't know. they don't know. They get paid the same amount. Yeah. It's just the hospital that's taking the hit. So it's not like it's on your chart or something. They have nothing to do with billing. Yeah. So you can like, sit there. Busy. You can sit there with the financial people at the hospital and put a slip of paper in an envelope that says $1 yeah. and say, this is what I want to pay you. And then slide it across to the financial person. And that's where the negotiation begins. That's why <laughs> That's why that department's so pissy all the time. It's because right. they're dealing with that. The doctors are happy. They're getting paid no matter what. What? I mean, you, hey, you have to have real, <laughs> realistic expectations, but you can find out the actual cost of tests and procedures online and then see what your hospital is charging and see like if you can get it down to the actual base real pay. But in, in, in a negotiation like this, what leverage do you have at all? Like I'm going to go have it at another hospital and look for something cheaper? It, Hospitals need to make money. A lot of them are non for, like non-profits. Some of them are for-profit. They need to make money. So like it's just the same as like... It's not quite the same as haggling with a car salesman, but it's like you can, for some procedures, have those conversations, especially <laughs> if you're financially strapped. I had no idea, I would, man. I would, I would totally be like, wow. all right, you guys <laughs> give me a free epidural and I will not eat 10 pounds of Taco Bell the day before. <laughs> right. Do we have an agreement? Man, this is like not something I want to like skimp on, man. I'll pay overpay for a hospital <laughs> <Yeah>. say. <laughs> the Bird Show.